more importantly, you know, cash, assets, family, family heirlooms, motor cars, you know. I mean, we're down to the last knockings of, you know, what's left lying on the floor. And that's all sort of disappearing as well. And what happened? Wine collections, stamp collections, you know, trophies, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, you know. What are we talking about? The bailiffs turning up? Or? No, 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 no. They're just the assets are disappearing. <laughs> and and with the assets are disappearing. Rec oh. Books and records are disappearing from the office. It's chaos. And it was agreed at a meeting held here at Eaton Square in the spring of 1992 that we should try and treat this like a sort of terrorist operation with an aeroplane. Allegorically speaking, we've got a 747 over London full of fuel and 450 people on board and a pile of terrorists. And we've got to try and get the aeroplane down on the ground into the corner of the airfield. So you knew right away when you were told that important parts of, of, of your... That we've got a big problem. Yeah, not only that you had a problem, but that, that there was something wrong. It wasn't That's a question right. of business deals going right. wrong. Why That's was right. that? That's right. What, why, did, why were you so sure that it wasn't just a question? Because it's because of, uh, just, it just, it's not possible that that position could be presented to me by virtue of the structures. Well, by the way the companies have been trading, you couldn't... Trading, be more importantly, the way the, the structures have been put in place, as far as the best of my knowledge and belief, vis-a-vis -vis the trust and the companies underlying that trust, whether the, it's the Scottish companies, the Irish companies, the American companies, with the Australian companies, you know, the architectural control systems. It took a while for the authorities to take an interest in the sudden collapse of the Carroll Foundation. But then a sharp-eyed tax inspector in Essex, Tony Sims, spotted inconsistencies in the company's financial returns. The big break, and I say this allegorically because it really is, I suppose, the most momentous time of my life, is that, that you know, sitting on that raft in the middle of the Atlantic with the, with the Titanic that's gone down with only a few bits on the water. I mean, who would actually believe me that actually, A, there was a Titanic and B, that actually it had gone down and C, I'd been the captain. But anyway, be that as it may, the frigate pulls alongside, the old Wad Ensign on the back. I'm sort of gulping for air and, 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 and pretty exhausted. And over the side comes an officer who actually is a rather experienced inland revenue inspector who believes what I'm saying and pulls me off the raft and pulls me onto the frigate and gives me a you know, fresh pair of clothes or whatever and says, well, Mr. Carroll, you know, where's it all gone? The Inland Revenue began an investigation, but it was hampered by a critical factor. Much of the documentation had vanished. The paper trail had gone cold. Predominantly what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with opaque trust law, which is a function of trust law, and we're dealing with with the fact that trusts have no obligation to file documentation in the public domain, which is a function of trusts. In this situation, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Today, this is virtually all that remains of Gerald Carroll's enormous wealth. The art collection, worth £6 million in 1991, was sold off, leaving behind these few pathetic bits and pieces stored in a South London warehouse. The coat of arms, which once adorned the gates of his country house, Warren Park. A model of his prized £3 million boat, the Carolina. Now he has only its flag. There's memorabilia of his horse racing stud. All that's left of the collection of Ferraris and Lamborghinis. A portrait of his once great heroine, Margaret Thatcher. And a painting of his father, with whom he's fought a long-running feud. At Hartford College, Oxford University, Carroll realised his passion for Irish history, endowing a chair in the subject. It had the Carroll Library, which is the finest library in private hands in the world of, of private books and manuscripts, which was the research centre. We had four researchers full-time, archaeologists, and it was a very uh, serious uh, operation. 
The remnants of the library are now to be found in a warehouse north of London. Only a few of the thousands of volumes remain. Parts of the library have been inflicted with criminal theft. Chunks of the library have been stolen and manuscripts have been stolen. In relation to this, I mean, not just ordinary theft, you were saying? The theft, pure theft. Yeah. Stolen books, manuscripts. By the people who've, yeah. who've robbed you generally. Yeah. Gerald Carroll still has a few influential friends, amongst them Sir Walter Bodmer, the distinguished geneticist and principal of Hartford College, Oxford, the seat of the chair. Sir Walter supports the campaign for a full investigation into the collapse of Carroll's businesses. I can't really go into the details of the material I've seen, and that's for an expert uh, to, to say, but there, there are enough indications, even to a fairly... Uh, uneducated eye that, that things were odd and you know money disappeared and companies changed names and so on but it would be quite 